كسودو بغداد أونلاين أكاديمي Hi, this is Thomas. Welcome back to the course Project Management Fundamentals. Today's lecture covers project monitoring, evaluation, and control. In this topic, we're going to look at monitoring, which covers activities and outputs, evaluation, which covers outcomes and goals. These are all part of the logic matrix, monitoring relating to the lower two levels, and evaluation relating to the upper two levels, and project control, which is a system to address and manage variances between the plan and the implementation of your project. We're going to develop a project monitoring and evaluation plan. This will be based on the logical framework matrix that we developed earlier. And in evaluating our indicators, there are several points to consider. First is what particular information do we need? And to be able to create that information, we need to gather data. So where will we get the data and what method of collection will we use? Then, who's responsible for data collection and how often does it happen? And finally, who are the users of the information? When we collect our data, perform our analysis, who is the recipient of the information that we have created? Here's a sample monitoring and evaluation plan. You can see it looks very similar in format to the logical framework matrix with some additional columns showing the additional components of detail relating to our indicators and one additional row, inputs, along with measuring activities, outputs, outcomes, and the goal. We might also want to measure inputs such as man hours, dollars spent, material used, etc. In thinking about data collection for monitoring and evaluation, as we've seen previously, we can consider two types of data, qualitative and quantitative. And good examples of qualitative data for monitoring and evaluation are focus groups or one-to-one -one interviews, as well as community observation. Examples of quantitative data collection are standardized questionnaires, which are general for a community, and specialized questionnaires, which would be designed for one particular group or special interest of a community. And in evaluating data collection options, we need to consider the cost-benefit relationship of the quality of the data and the cost of the data. We have resource limits as a part of our project, but beyond those resource limits, it's important to ask the question not just how do we minimize the cost, but what are we getting from this data collection and will it help us to develop information that is going to be useful for decision making for our project. The monitoring and evaluation plan is part of the monitoring system and an effective monitoring system has six important characteristics. One is indicators as we're looking at in detail in the monitoring and evaluation plan. The other is schedule and budget, the people and the dollars we can spend on monitoring and evaluation. Who are the particular people to be assigned to monitoring and evaluation, staff and partners? The data cycle of the monitoring system includes collection of data, review, summary and analysis of data, which then results in information, and feedback to the project manager based on that information things are going as planned, continue what you're doing, or make some adjustments and the feedback should include specific recommendations for changes or adjustments. Data management is keeping the data accessible and secure and the link to the organization refers to the relationship between this particular project and the higher level program and even higher level portfolio of an organization. It's possible that the changes in asset usage, either dollars or people, or ideas or lessons learned as a result of this project have a connection, have an impact for us in relation to the higher level program and portfolio of the organization. As we move into project evaluation, an important consideration is that thinking through the logical framework of activities to outputs, to outcomes, to goals. At the project level, our responsibility is up to the outcome level. 
not to the goal level. We want to achieve the outcomes to work towards the goals, but our focus, our accountability is for the outcomes of the project. The first component that we'll look at for project evaluation is the final evaluation. This is almost always a requirement either of the donor or the organization performing the work. Teams will collect and analyze data per, to produce information and important questions to be considered in the final evaluation are did the project accomplish the outcomes that were initially planned? Was the project relevant? Did it do something meaningful for the community? Was it effective? Did the work produce a result that was helpful to the community? And was it efficient? Was the result obtained at a reasonable cost? Next, are the project operations and impacts sustainable? Will the community be able to successfully continue the work after we hand over the project? And finally, are the logical framework assumptions valid? The assumptions that we had in place in moving from our activities if then we have outputs, if then we have outcomes, if then we're making progress towards goals, were those if then assumptions valid? And we can also perform a midterm evaluation. This would of course happen before the final evaluation. The structure is similar to that of the final evaluation. The difference is this is happening during the life of the project, so it gives us an opportunity to improve the project's performance, make adjustments to work towards a, a better result in the end. And finally, the sustainable impact evaluation happens after a time period after the end of the project, perhaps a year after the end of the project, let's say. This is to determine whether the sustainability that we expected was real. And the final component of project evaluation is sustainable impact evaluation. This process takes place sometime after the end of project transition, perhaps six months to a year after the transition. And the purpose of this evaluation is to determine whether the outcomes that were expected after the transition have been realized and what is the extent to which the project has continued under the ownership of the community. And moving to project control, this is the system in place for the project to ensure that there is a smooth procedure to implement project change when necessary. The project charter gives tolerance limits for the authority of the project manager. Those could be under or over measurements. We might be under in the results that we've achieved, or we might be over in the amount of time or the amount of money that we've spent on the project. And if the project see if the project manager sees that there will be a need to go beyond the tolerances, then the project manager needs to seek higher authority, and this is the change request process. The change request process, first the project manager should make an assessment of what effect is this going to have on the original plan regarding scheduling, resources, costs, and quality. Then the project manager should consult with stakeholders so that they are aware of the situation. There's a likelihood of exceeding tolerances. Next is making sure that the resources that are necessary to be successful under the new plan are in place. And finally, the project manager should communicate the revised project plan to the stakeholders involved in the project. This concludes the lecture, Project Monitoring, Evaluation, and Control.